Hi everyone, I'm Ken from Crypto Trading KS and the inventor of the CTKS method. Today, we're going to track the end of month projections for Bitcoin, the S&P 500, the DXY and gold to assess market direction and then we'll look at rule 45 to help you to profit more from financial markets. To gain insights not found anywhere else on YouTube, please like and subscribe and become part of our global CTKS family. We'd love to have you here. The mission of CTKS is to assist you to become more of a financial and emotional blessing to yourself and those you love. We do deeper dives. Inside the CTKS Masterclass, links are in the description of this video. Let's run the numbers. Financial markets are all interdependent and intercorrelated. One thing is common, and that is risk. All financial markets involve risk. You should only put into the market what you can afford to lose because you will learn a lot before you become profitable. When we look at the CTKS risk indicator, we can see that there was a certain amount of risk on behavior. Let's drill down to Bitcoin, which is the leading risk indicator across markets. Looking at the projections out to the end of April, we can see we're currently under negative momentum. We're basically following that negative path towards the end of April. This is just at the current time. You must also bear in mind the price is not just going to follow one path. It could go midway. It could swap paths. It could jump paths. This is something to keep in your mind at all times. But currently the momentum inside the crypto market is negative. Bitcoin is currently trading at $27,342. One thing to bear in mind here, we had a slight kick up in the S&P 500 futures, but crypto was having none of that. Bitcoin, as the world's most risk-on or risk-off asset class, wasn't buying that the stock market would go up. Drilling in to the S&P 500, we can see that the market was largely undecided. It did repel the negative price momentum of sellers, and it ended basically flat. Zooming in a little bit, we can see that price of the S&P 500 is remaining relatively flat. It's not falling and it's not rising. The buyers and the sellers are around equally matched. What's a little interesting here with this pattern, this is called a doji, and it generally means that the in this particular case, as prices come down, the buyers and sellers have become equally matched. That's why they're flatlining it. Generally, we'd expect a reasonably strong reversal from a candle like this, and we can see we got a slight upward pressure on markets, but it wasn't dramatic. The S&P 500 closed at 4133. Many people think that the stock market and the crypto market are not related. They are. Rule 225, Bitcoin cannot escape the stock market's gravity. Gravity is a very nuanced thing. We see many times that Bitcoin actually leads the stock market. It's a stock market forward indicator of risk sentiment. I'll give you an example. Recently, Bitcoin was coming down. There was a bit of a blip up in the stock market. This is the S&P 500 futures. But Bitcoin said, I don't really think so. I think the market is going to come down. And that's exactly what happened. But then what did Bitcoin do? It sharply reversed putting that forward indicator understanding on the market. And then what happened to the S&P 500? It went up. Bitcoin is a powerful forward risk indicator in terms of the stock market. It's very valuable to look at. When looking at the DXY, the US dollar currency index, the DXY tried to break bullish, but it didn't work. It was pushed down. So it's ended just a little bit lower, but roughly flat. If we go back to the same time frame on the S&P 500, as the DXY rallied, what happened to the S&P 500? It was pushed down and then the DXY started to collapse down. What happened to the S&P 500? It started to rally. Gold and Bitcoin have been very tightly correlated recently. We can see that gold 
as the DXY rallied up, gold came down. And when the DXY came down, gold rallied up, but it didn't really buy into gold's descent. We can see that currently gold is on the negative path. Inside the masterclass, we do deep dives on so many different facets of the market. And I share my live charts as well. In TM6, I share these eight charts. What we can see is the VIX tried to rally. Very interesting. What does this particular candle mean? It meant that the DXY went up, yields went up, and the markets came down. But then the VIX started to come down. And what did that do? It made the markets just rally a little bit. Bitcoin is pointing towards this concept of the VIX coming down as not being sustainable. That's in the short term. We always keep three-dimensional thinking first and foremost. And what did we see in the major market index, the NASDAQ? That came down. What about oil? Slight retracement. What about bonds? Recessionary on behavior in terms of the bond market came up a little bit and then sold down as yields recovered. And we can see this very tight association between Bitcoin, which is the darker, well, it's the blue line, against the normal candlestick pattern, which is gold in the background. The wavy <laughs> DXY has actually crossed a level of resistance, but it's under sell pressure. Rule 45 is an incredibly important rule. No ult can escape Bitcoin's gravity. Many people, when they're new into the crypto market, they don't look at Bitcoin. After all, it's so expensive. Look at that, $27,291. Well, now a little bit cheaper. But the concept is, well, that's just out of reach. Let's go for something like ADA, which is only 38 cents, or XRP, which is 44 cents, or even Doge, that's under 8 cents. What great value. Professionals do not think this way ever. A lot of people think that when you own more of something, you get a million shib and then suddenly, well, you can go and be a billionaire. Well, that may happen, but the concept is you can own a Bitcoin and still be a millionaire as well. It's not about quantity, it is about percentages and being on the right side of the percentage. Note one thing, as Bitcoin comes down, what happens to the other alts? They come down. And we're noticing a little bit of positive price momentum inside BNB. BNB is a trading coin, it absorbs fees in Binance, which is the largest crypto exchange on the planet. This is generally a good thing to look at if people are coming in and piling in money into BNB, which is raising its price, that could point to a short-term market turnaround. When looking at the greatest gainers in the past 24 hours, top 100, we look at quality. We can see Zillica, Paxdollar, Flare, BNB, ARB, CRO, and BSV. What about the greatest losers over the past 24 hours? We can see Render Token, RNDR, taking out pole position, followed by Conflux, OKB, Phantom, DYDX, Synthetix, and AVAX. Understanding gravity is a powerful thing to do inside any financial markets. If you're in the stock market, what's the gravity? It's the major market indexes. If you're in the stock market index, for example, in Australia, what's the gravity? It's the US markets. Gravity is absolutely everywhere inside financial markets. Let's look at the top eight alts. Well, Bitcoin and the top seven. What we want to do when we look at this, note Bitcoin's price behavior. I've zoomed in here because we only want to cover the past several days. We want to get a very clear indication of turning points. We can see as Bitcoin came down, what happened to Ethereum? It basically followed it down, but it was just penalized a little bit more than Bitcoin. What about BNB? It's withstood the route in Bitcoin quite well. Look at this big spike up that was then faded. This is one thing you have to be very, very aware of. Sharp angles tend to 
dot dot dot. Please know, <laughs> please let me know if you know that dot 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 because it's important to understand. Sharp angles do something. When you understand that, you can be more of a financial and emotional blessing to yourself and those you love. XRP, we can see bled out a lot more than Bitcoin did. And we expect these things to happen. The alts disproportionately sell off and sell up or buy up when Bitcoin is doing its thing, either going down or going up. What do we see with ADA? ADA has been punished more than Bitcoin. But when Bitcoin starts to rally, ADA will start to rally. What about Doge? Doge has really been penalized recently and it was holding on quite well for a time. But then Bitcoin's gravity is absolute. And this is what people fail to understand a lot of times. They see just in this period as Bitcoin was coming down, Doge was doing quite well. And they said, Doge is going to escape Bitcoin's gravity. Nothing escapes Bitcoin's gravity overall. That's why understanding the concept of gravity is money in your pocket. What about Matic? Matic is bleeding more than Bitcoin. But this is to be anticipated. When Bitcoin comes down, everything comes down. But Matic has been very weak. We're expecting a bit of a turnaround in Matic. And in the red times, Matic tends to come down and tends to recover first. So we're keeping a very close eye on Matic. Solana can be very weak but can get very, very strong all of a sudden. So Solana is probably one to keep on your watch list as well. I don't ever recommend any specific crypto or any specific stock or any specific currency. You must make your own decisions. What do we see with Solana? It's bleeding out more than Bitcoin at the current time, which is what we anticipate. What we're actually seeing here, the only one that's inverting is BNB at the current time. That's interesting. Keep your eye on BNB. Turning to the next eight top cryptos, what do we see with DOT? DOT is bleeding out more than Bitcoin. Currently, we can see the same thing in Litecoin. Litecoin is a very, very interesting crypto to look at. It always over accentuates either an upward movement or a downward movement in Bitcoin's gravity. When Bitcoin decides to turn around, keep your eyes on Litecoin. What about SHIB? It's just coming down with Bitcoin's gravitational alignment. There's something really interesting to note with Tron. Tron is only down about 3%. Bitcoin down 10%. So Tron is really holding up well against Bitcoin. What does this actually mean? We saw recently that the SEC had to go at Binance and also Justin Sun's Tron. They were very, very weak. A lot of sellers came in and they're pretty much exhausted. This is why we're seeing BNB and Tron do particularly relatively well versus Bitcoin at the current time. These kind of things you want to keep in your mind. AVAX has been pretty much hit with a hammer relative to Bitcoin's gravitational pull. It's down 20% versus Bitcoin's down 10%. When Bitcoin starts to recover, we would expect to play in the opposite direction. Could be something interesting to keep your eye on. Link, Chainlink has also been hit harder than Bitcoin. Chainlink is down around 18% versus Bitcoin's down around 10.5%. What do we see with Uni? Just kind of moving in the same direction. Look at this big sell-off here. Now, what we see is just slightly more, but not a big gap like what we've seen with AVAX. So far, AVAX is one of the weakest. So keep your eye on AVAX recovery. This is why we look at these alts. You must cast your mind and your eye far afield. Understand how everything relates to each other. That will reveal the matrix of financial markets to you. What about Adam? It's down about 14% or nearly 15% in terms of Bitcoin, just a little over 10%. So we could say this is about normal. Rule 45, no alt can escape Bitcoin's gravity. Do you believe Rule 45 has merit? Please let me know in the comments. 
As traders, we're always trying to minimize risk and maximize opportunity. Let's have a look at Stellar. Let's dive more deeply into the next eight. And this is good for you to do. You should do this regularly. When we look at Stellar, we can see it's just tracking Bitcoin's gravity. We've seen this before. It's pretty much smack bang on Bitcoin's gravity. Where did we see that last time? Spot on, we saw it with SHIB, but did we see it anywhere else? We saw it to a lesser degree with Ethereum. Looking at ICP, ICP has been hit with a brick, but it was doing really, really well. And then it sold down. It was above Bitcoin's gravity. It was doing incredibly well. And then the inevitable happened. Bitcoin's gravity grabbed that alt and pulled it not just to the earth, but through the earth. ICP is down about twice as much as Bitcoin is at the current time. Where have we seen this before? Correct, we just saw it with AVAX. When Bitcoin came down like this, Filecoin was heavily hit. And we saw that last time when Bitcoin came down, Filecoin was also heavily hit. It's now down around 17% versus Bitcoin around 10. Aptos is nearly down 19% versus Bitcoin's 10. This is getting hard hit by Bitcoin's gravity. You can see some alts are hit hard, others are not, some invert. Looking at ARB, this is really quite fascinating. Look at this consolidation that's occurring, almost inversion. When you saw Bitcoin came down, what did ARB do? It went the other direction. But as Bitcoin continued to fall, ARB continued to fall as well. ARB is potentially the first inverter that we've seen. What does this actually mean? It means that we'll be keeping a close eye on ARB. We want to see if this grounding action, this consolidation action, because it is actually pointing to upwards price momentum, we want to see if that actually moves against Bitcoin's gravity. You always want to identify inverters. Any particular project, any crypto that moves in the opposite direction of Bitcoin is called an inverter. Looking at HBAR, HBAR is just moving in alignment with Bitcoin's gravity at the current time. And what about LDO? LDO is down quite a lot, nearly 19% down. So you can see when you look at different alts, try to actually categorize them into groups. We talk about groups a lot inside the masterclass. And we also have a very, very special way of understanding Bitcoin's gravitational pull on the alts. What about NEAR? NEAR is down over 18% relative to Bitcoin, coming down about 10%. One thing to bear in mind, the weak become strong and the strong become weak. What were the weakest crypto projects recently? Undoubtedly, BNB and Tron. They're showing a degree of strength at the moment. Let's go a little bit deeper because we're looking for inverters, overextenders, underextenders. Looking at the next alt, we can see that VET is fairly overextended, but not up to that negative 20%. APE is a little bit overextended, but it's only around 14% down. ALGO, very similar to VET, around 17% down. Quant is looking very, very interesting. Look at this behavior on Quant. Quant is showing a degree of inversion around the current price. I believe Quant is something that you should keep your eye on. As traders, we're in and out of different opportunities. There's nothing to say a trader can't invest. Of course, you can do anything you want. We can see the graph is very overextended. That's GRT. Phantom is also very overextended. Negative 20%, just a little bit over. What about EOS? It's overextended, but moderately overextended. And what about SAN? SAN is overextended around the 16% mark. You can see Bitcoin's gravity rules supreme in the crypto market. This is exactly why we do our daily three-dimensional risk management code. We need to understand where the market could go. 
Crypto is incredibly volatile, but we make that volatility our best friend. We buy in layers and levels down. We never go all in at one particular point and we rarely buy market. You can see a lot of people buying and selling at market. That creates enormous slippage and that creates horrendous problems over the long term, especially if you trade quite a bit. Professionals wait. Retail jumps in, typically with both feet, unfortunately. The reason that we do the three-dimensional risk management thinking is we always assume, what if price goes against us? What if it goes down when we're buying long at spot? We have to understand how our portfolio could get hit. We can see extenders playing in here, neutral, which are stable coins, and then the inverters. If the whole market is coming down, you would expect the majority of your portfolio to go with it because a lot of alts, of course, as you've seen, follow Bitcoin's gravity, but it depends how it comes down. If it dramatically sells off, literally no alt can escape that. Always remember that the weak become strong and generally the weaker, the stronger. Very cool to understand. Synchronization is the key inside financial markets. Other people don't pay you profit for getting it right. The market pays you for being synchronized. If you're not synchronized, if you become desynchronized, the market takes the money back. Always remember, you control the trade or investment, but it's the market that controls the returns. And those returns are always based on your active learning your knowledge and your courage. The markets will always penalize blame and gambling. You may gamble and win, but long term you're going to get financially slaughtered. Rule 141 from the masterclass. Go slow to go fast. Life is a marathon. It is not a sprint. You may be craving financial independence, so you go all in and more. Please don't do that. A lot of the times people say, but Ken, it's a sure thing. It's guaranteed not to fail. No such thing in life and especially inside financial markets. It's a long, long time since we've spoken about chaos zone analysis, but I think it's really important to understand. There are two zones that people lose money in. That's zone one and zone two. Zone three is where you make money, but zone four is where you keep it. A lot of people come to the financial markets, all of them, the stock market, Forex, crypto, commodities, you name it, it's all the same. And they say, I deserve a thousand percent returns. The unfortunate thing in life, we don't deserve anything unless we put the effort in. In zone one, people spend a lot of time gambling. They're after the 100 to 1 shots. They must make a thousand X or they don't feel worthy. They're always looking for a 100% return or more and 0% loss. This is fantasy. None of this exists in financial markets. If people are talking to you from this perspective, you are getting conned. It takes a lot of strength to get out of the panic zone. And believe me, these are four stages that every single investor and trader progresses through. So if you're in zone one at the moment, please don't feel bad about it. Everybody goes through it. What is the next step in the evolution? It's zone two. Blame, conflict, jealousy. All ugly, ugly things. Jealousy is an ugly thing that manifests in the conflict and blame zone. What is jealousy anyway? It's just insecurity. It's the feeling that somebody has something that you can never have. Of course you can have what they have. This world is an open door, but you must change your thinking. Jealousy repels success and it repels wealth. It also creates an enormous amount of misery. Our mission here is to assist you to become more of a financial and emotional blessing to yourself and those you love. You can see clearly that when people are stuck inside zone one and zone two, they can't be an emotional blessing to themselves and they won't be an emotional blessing to others.
Yet nobody talks about this. Before I created KS Zone Analysis, people were just acting and not knowing what zone they were caught in. And when I say caught, I mean caught, literally. It takes knowledge and understanding to get out of Zone 1 and Zone 2. In Zone 3, this is where we make money. When we make money, we're using our learning and our courage, our patience and our rules. We understand that panic doesn't work, blame doesn't work. The market and other people simply don't listen to our panic and our blame. They just shut off and shut down. Therefore, we have to do things differently inside Zone 3. We have to make our three-way decisions. We have to understand percentages. We need to be patient. We need to have lots and lots of rules. We need to follow the CTKS method, which helps us to understand where smart money is buying and selling. We need to understand the 10-5-10 fund. What's the 10-5-10 fund? Ken, when have you spoken about that? I used to speak about it all the time. The concept is the percentages are very unknown to most people. If you buy something at $10, it drops down to $5. You, are, you already figured it out. You lost half your money. That's 50%. But if it goes from 5 back up to 10, you've just gained 5. 5 on 5 is a 100% increase. 10 5 10 is the way the financial markets move in a wave, especially in crypto. Price is always the reality. There could be an enormous amount of good news or an enormous amount of bad news. What do we do? We just project where price could potentially go in three dimensions. One of those dimensions will reveal itself. And if you see price starting to break into an alternate dimension, that's where you can see reversals coming. Remember, this is only a conservative estimate. If we get a dramatic spike down, that's a fear-based spike. We want to determine panic inside the markets. In Zone 3, people are getting their act together. They're doing really, really well. They're profitable. But what happens in Zone 4, just because you're in Zone 3, doesn't mean you're happy. In Zone 4, it does mean you're happy. Zone 4 is all about a positive excellence life trend, one of integrity, decency, kindness, strength, and boundaries. In Zone 1, we're like little children. We're just saying, I want, give me, give me. It's all about hope and luck, praying in patience, fun, excitement. If you treat financial markets like a casino, the house is always going to win because you're desynchronized from day one. To get into Zone 4, and the beautiful thing, you don't have to go through Zone 1, Zone 2, Zone 3. You can go straight to positive excellence, to Zone 4. You need these little green words. These little green words are a do be list. Do be kind. Do be courageous. Have strength. Have boundaries. Being kind doesn't mean that people walk all over you. Quite the opposite. Carry a big stick, but take it out rarely. What you're actually looking for is inner peace and outer peace. A lot of people say, but Ken, I love conflict. Conflict is fantastic. It makes me feel alive. If you really want to feel alive, you'll find that inner peace and outer peace absolutely rock and roll. Please let me know in the comments which one of these positive excellence areas has helped you the most to find inner peace and outer peace. And is inner peace and outer peace really worth it? Does it make that much difference? And what about kindness? Is that really important? I would love to hear your thoughts. Remember, we're all about helping you to become more of a financial and emotional blessing to yourself and those you love. Why is an emotional blessing important? Because if you don't feel good each and every day, that's a nasty place to be. You should feel a degree of satisfaction with your life exactly where you are each and every day. Don't worry about competing with other people. They don't even notice you. What you have to do is notice yourself. You are worthy right now. The financial markets are a knowledge game and a mind game. Before you buy and sell, it's very important that your aim is through positive excellence or you'll fall into zone one, zone two, and potentially even zone three behaviors. 
Zone 3 is on the way to Zone 4. Always make sure that you have your knowledge. Build yourself up slowly. Go slow to go fast. What you're looking at is the structure of the masterclass. Better habits create a better life and all results come from the mind. So therefore a better mind creates better outcomes through better habits. How do you identify a habit? Because habits are just automatic. They're a subconscious. They can be very, very difficult to identify. It's generally when you say something to yourself, such as, Oh, I always mess things up. Oh, that's a negative habit. You want to crush that one. Another negative habit. Oh, I just can't learn. I'm just not a learner. This life demands that you be a learner if you want to succeed. You don't have to tell you yourself things like that. You can simply say, I win or learn and never blame. And you go slow to go fast and you are worthy. And that's a really, really important thing to understand. These daily positive affirmations for abundance, financial success and happiness are all about gearing your mind to understand that you are worthy of all the beautiful things that you can experience in this world. The past is the past. None of us had a good hand of cards dealt to us. You have to consistently throw out the bad cards and upgrade to the better ones. But you just do it slowly. Because life is a marathon. It is not a sprint. Many people feel that the world, the universe, whatever you want to call it, is oppressing them. It's designed them to make them fail. This is not correct. What you put in is what you get out. If you just simply say to yourself with positive conviction, I know the universe is designed to make me succeed. You're creating intergenerational life change. It takes many, many years to learn and understand. You're the one who will ultimately control your path through life. When people feel the universe is against them, that they can't win, they show a lot of hostility, aggression, blame, all sorts of negative responses. But if you know deep down that what you put in is what you get out, and you can prove this any time in your life, what you look at magnifies. Also, think of a particular thing that you've done particularly well at. If you look at that, you have put the effort in. You've been absolutely committed to doing your best in that area, and you're getting the best out. That's as simple as it gets in life. What you put in is what you get out. This rule cannot be broken. Therefore, if you know this, if you know the universe is not against you, if you know the universe is for you, you just have to behave a little differently. And you can say, every day I show kindness, integrity and gratitude. Most times when people feel the universe is against them, they show anger, not kindness. They don't use integrity. What is integrity? Integrity is basically doing the right thing when nobody is looking, being true to your word. When people think that the world is against them, they will not show integrity. They'll do the wrong thing when nobody is looking. And what happens to those people? When you don't show integrity, your life will implode. It may be a delayed implosion, but it will implode at some stage. Angry people, the last thing that they would want to show is gratitude. Instead, they show entitlement. Entitlement has become a pandemic of its own. If we look around, everybody is entitled. It's a very, very sad thing because we're not entitled to anything. Instead, what we do to become successful is that we give. Entitlement is the focus on getting first because... After all, entitlement means that is mine and I'm going to take it. A lot of people inside Zone 1 and Zone 2 say, I'm entitled to profits. I put my money into the market. Why isn't it paying me? It could be that you don't have the right attitude in terms of understanding how the market works. Positive excellence will fix that. It could be that you just don't have the knowledge. You just don't know how the markets are intercorrelated and interdependent. That can be fixed as well. You just need more knowledge. 
Success and entitlement move inversely to each other. What does that mean? The more entitled you feel, the less success you will have in life. Instead, focus on working hard. Focus on showing gratitude. And gratitude can be as simple as giving somebody a smile or saying, I appreciate you. To become more of a financial and emotional blessing to yourself and those you love is what we focus on here. We are highly technical, we're highly innovative and inventive in how we do that. But the thing to understand, it all comes down to you. What you put in, you will ultimately get back and you'll get back much, much more. That's why my favorite part of the CTKS Creed, I am dedicated and committed. I win or learn and never blame. I always solve my problems with positive excellence. And if you're going through a life pullback at the moment, and that's very, very common for our community, it's common for people. We always get these curve balls thrown at us. Just remember, life pullbacks give you the strength for the next life rally. Have a great day or night ahead, my friends, and Kate and I look forward to catching up with you again tomorrow. Bye for now.